Hell's Kitchen is super tough, no other way around it. And due to its toughness, the winners are usually pretty obvious from the get-go, as it's very unlikely a chef who struggles at the very beginning of the competition will all of a sudden become a beast down the line. However, sometimes we do indeed see chefs dominate very early on, but instead of continuing their dominance, they begin a slow downfall as the elements of Hell's Kitchen catch up to them. What's going on guys, I'm Flint Masters, and today, we'll be taking a look at the biggest downfalls in Hell's Kitchen history. From getting too arrogant to just flat out making more mistakes as the competition heated up, these chefs all started out as potential frontrunners, but their skills slowly wore off over time. And remember, these are downfalls, not crash and burns, as that's a different video entirely. Before we begin, if you love Hell's Kitchen, then please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, as this is the place to be if you love long and short form HK content. With all that said, let's take a look back at the top 5 biggest downfalls in Hell's Kitchen history. Bloody hell, here I go again. Some honorable mentions to the likes of Andrea from Season 5, Josh from Season 14, and Gail from Season 8, who while not exactly frontrunners, definitely did show promise out the gate, but quickly lost steam as the competition went on, as they all basically fell into a black jacket. There's plenty of other good downfalls, but here are the 5 that stand out the most to me. At number 5 is a classic example of Ramsay giving a chef a chance to shine, only for it to lead to a downfall, and a quick one at that. I'm of course talking about the abrupt downfall of Hassan in season 15. During the first three episodes of the season, Hassan showed signs of promise, but it wasn't until episode 4 where he really shined, leading the blue team to victory, and even took charge of the red kitchen when Ramsay sent the blue team over to finish service. You got your sauce? Yep. Get your sauce in the boat. Come on, fast, fast, fast. You guys going to the pass with two tuna? Right here. I got two sauce going to the pass. With Hassan driving the blue team, the men are sending a steady stream of entrees out to their diners. Two tunas, they're ready, we'll go to the pass. Why are you screaming? I'm not screaming, this is how I talk. First ticket out team, love the teamwork guys. With a very vocal Hassan leading the charge, the men have taken over the red kitchen. After this dominant performance, Ramsey sent Hassan over to the red team as they had lost three services in a row, and Hassan could hopefully help that team turn its losing skit around. However, unfortunately for Hassan, the losing from the red team must have rubbed off onto him as he never found his footing during his three services on the red team, leading to a shocking early elimination. Now, to be fair, Hassan got really unlucky with this elimination as he obviously had such high expectations, and the other three chefs put up for elimination that night had shown skills in one way or another as well. So unfortunately, Hassan stood out like a sore thumb in this group of four. While it may be a bit unfair, Hassan simply didn't rise up to the occasion to lead the red team, but in his defense, I would probably be a different chef as well if I went for my bros on the blue team to dealing with Jackie 24-7 on the red team. Chicken sauce is at the pass. Chicken! Right here, chef. Coming to the pass. Chicken. conversation, look. Yes, chef. Chicken's raw. You cannot be serious. Yes, chef. I thought a move on the red team would give Hassan a chance to shine. Unfortunately, it only shined the light on his shortcomings. At number 4 is Ed from Hell's Kitchen Season 7. Now on paper, Ed is pretty much your typical Hell's Kitchen winner. He's in the prime of his life, isn't obese and thus can keep up in the kitchen, and is a natural born leader due to being a cooking instructor. And he had the confidence too, and wasn't afraid to show it. It's not that I'm cocky, but Hell's Kitchen is going to be a piece of cake. But unlike a certain other chef from this season, Ed was able to back up the big talk with his performance. Well, at least for the first half of the competition. In an opening night that featured nearly half the chefs getting kicked out, Ed stood out as the leader for the remaining chefs, resulting in the very first opening night dinner service completion in Hell's Kitchen. And he didn't really let up afterwards either, as he and Jay were consistently reliable for the dominant Season 7 blue team. But then, after a drunken night, it appeared that Ed never recovered from this hangover, as his flaws really began the show at the final nine, leading to the blue team getting kicked out. Oh, what a it's not, that's how it comes in slice, but look, yeah, it's wrong. It's not good enough, guys. Hey, hey, come here, hold your hands up. Yeah, look at me. You, 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 and you. About. Leave me alone. Get out. While he somewhat recovered after this, he certainly wasn't the same chef he had been previously, as Jay clearly began to outshine him as the figurehead on the blue team. But luckily, he was able to sneak his way into the black jackets, in large part due to Nelka's meltdown. But speaking of meltdown, I think due to Nelka's iconic bad service, people tend to forget just how bad Ed was the very next service, as this was legitimately one of the worst individual services in Hell's Kitchen history. Two doors, chef. Ed, yes. Still rolling the tenders, the son of no sushi. Ed. Yes, chef. Raw halibut. Not undercooked. Raw. Halibut. Behind. Behind. Two halibut. Ed. It's still raw. Damn. I think. 
and then that comes up to me. Yeah, do me a favor. You and you get out. Enough. Simply crazy that a chef who appeared so locked in at the start of the competition could have a service this bad, and his general downfall leading up to this service was really shocking to see play out. Ed was one of the favorites because of his strong start. Unfortunately, in cooking, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. The next downward spiral wasn't just a downfall cooking-wise, but looks-wise as well, as man, Melissa from Season 3 certainly had a rough fall from grace during her stay. Melissa started off very strong, having far and away the best signature dish, and was named the best of the worst after the red team lost opening night, and it looked like she was a team player as well, as she nominated the right people in Tiffany and Joanna over Julia, who most of the team wanted gone since she didn't have much experience. She continued to be solid throughout the first couple days of the competition, up until episode 4, where she had her first off night. One minute to the win! Julia needs two minutes. I need two minutes. I gotta put my risotto up. You ready? Did you hear me? I need two minutes. Something's happened, but no one's told me. Um, I overcooked the scallops. Thank you. Melissa, you're running the appetizers, yes? yes? You're running ahead, and no one's with you. Yes, chef. You're not a team player. Oh, why is three of you on the Wellington? Medium rare is in the oven. Which temperature was oh, it? Oh, look at them. <laughs> me, look at them. Too many cooks are... The Wellingtons. However, her performance had been so good up until that point that she wasn't even nominated by Jen. But I guess getting called out by Ramsay that elimination must have spooked her, as Melissa would continue to falter the next two episodes, leading to a very angry elimination by Ramsay after giving her multiple chances. So in what looked like a potential dominant win for Melissa early on, quickly turned into one of the biggest downfalls ever, as in a span of three episodes, she went from frontrunner to the blue team to not even making it to the black jackets, all the while slowly losing her precious looks as well. Truly a double whammy downfall. Melissa! Yes, chef! It's like paper scallops. I'll get new ones, chef. Go. Oh, look. Everything she touches, she screws. There you go. Sorry, guys. Hey. Monkfish? Yeah, right. Uh, Fish King, come here, you. There's the monkfish. Overcooked? That's overcooked. Oh, God almighty. She doesn't know that's overcooked. Rock, she doesn't know that's too the fing overcooked. Melissa. Yes, sir. Step forward. Take your jacket off and get out of Hell's Kitchen. You, madam, have had more chances than anybody. Good night. At number two is Zach's downfall from season 11. I don't think there's ever been a chef in Hell's Kitchen who had a better intro than Zach, as he had one of the most badass and guttiest performances in Hell's Kitchen history during opening night, as the entire blue team got kicked out of the kitchen other than him and Christian, and yet despite all the mistakes and miscommunication from his teammates, he didn't make one mistake all night and basically single-handedly completed dinner service for the blue team. Heck, he even threw up in the middle of service and got back to work right after. Talk about a freaking warrior. Again, expectations could not be higher for Zach coming out this episode, as this was freaking Dave Levy type stuff. However, not even two episodes later, he showed his first signs of weakness as he got caught into a lie by Chef Ramsay. Chef told me that I can't use the fish that I had just cooked off, but the salmon looked perfect. All I gotta do is finish it off and send it out. Where's this from? Those are the old stuff, Chef. That's the old stuff. Yes, Chef. Have we been using that? No, Chef. Have we, Zach? No, Chef. We're doing the thing straight to the order. Did you take salmon from the back and reheat it? I tried I, to. I, yes or no? No, Chef. It's right here. Shut the f up. Off the salmon. Luckily, this didn't amount to too much, and Zach remained a very consistent chef throughout the first half of the competition. But man, once the second half hit, it was almost like he turned into a different chef. Not only did his service mistakes increase, but he also did some pretty devious things, such as try to sabotage Ray during his time on the pass, for very petty reasons. So, earlier, Chef Ray tells me to f*** off, and now I'm definitely gonna get revenge. I'm trying to sabotage him. I'm thinking I can f*** it up with cold sauce. Here you are, Chef Ray. I'm the last person you want to cross. It's cold. Ray, it's cold. One minute before you're f***ing the greens, ready? Now, when are you two going to wake up? <laughs> I'm just laughing, thinking to myself, I got you. Zach was nominated in four of the next five elimination ceremonies, and honestly, he could have been eliminated as early as the final nine over Michael, and especially at the final seven over Anthony, and the only reason why he stayed was due to Ramsey realizing that since he was having such a downfall, he would more than likely continue to struggle and thus be an easy boot at the final six, which would create a one-man black jacket season to keep in line with the season 11 narrative. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. While it may be unfair to hold Zach to the standards of his first service, I think it's at least fair to say that nobody could have expected him to be as bad as he was down the stretch after his epic premiere and overall good showing in the first half of the competition. Right here, chef. Trust me, I got this. 
Look at the f***ing lamb. That's what I've been given. Would you eat that? No, wow. chef. Would you wait three months to come and eat that? No, chef. Hey, is that your best? No, chef, that's not my At best. At this stage of the game, if you can't give me your best, hey, Zach, your history, pick it up or f*** off, OK? No, chef. But to me, the most shocking downfall in Hell's Kitchen history comes from Anton in Season 12. To say Anton was a frontrunner at the beginning of the season would be an understatement, as he didn't just do well during the first half of the competition, he absolutely dominated, having multiple standout challenge and dinner service performances, and he was even nominated as captain for the blue team at the final 15, and led his team to victory. Anton was a great line cook, showed his skills during challenges, and was a great vocal leader. What more could you ask for? Well, I guess even he got ahead of himself after his dominance to start the season, because essentially out of nowhere, at the final 10 dinner service, he had an absolutely miserable performance. There you go, chef. Let's have a coat. Honestly, chef, Thank this you. guy is causing a lot of confusion in the corner for me, and that threw me right off from the beginning. Okay, this boy's blaming it on us, man. Come on, walk it. Right here, chef. Let's have a coat. All of you, come here. What was the one thing I asked, Anton? Don't let it overcook, chef. So, well, look at that. Touch it. Overcooked, and it's f***ing dry, Anton. Sorry, chef. I'm tired of doing everything. Man. Nobody talk to me once I ask, please. Seriously. It doesn't work like that, man. Anton's a douchebag, man. Watch out. Tonight's service was a nightmare for me. It was pathetic. Oh, Scott, dropping oil. Of course it was my fault. I've seen it all now in Hell's Kitchen. I think I might have seen it all. While Anton was able to rebound pretty well during his first couple of services as a red team member, his arrogance and misogyny would ultimately be what sunk him, as he had yet another abysmal performance at the final eight. Anton seems to be struggling to get organized on the meat station. Where are we at with the chicken? Do you have a chicken? Yes, chicken's right here, I gotta cut it. You slice the chicken, yes? Yes, chef. Look, pink, there, that's what I'm showing you there. I wasn't really responsible for that. I was just trying to help and do whatever I could for the team. Wellingtons, where are they? 10 minutes left on those two Wellingtons. 10 minutes? Yes, yeah, chef. Here's your salmon. You cooked them properly this time. Unfortunately, you're miles away. All of you stop. These are Anton, these are not a little over. That's way over, yes. Next door is oven, I got it down pat. This one, I screwed it up. Normally for next door, it's 18 minutes and five minutes on the side. I let it rest for no five minutes. Stop yelling at me. I've told them it's 14 minutes. This oven you said is 14 minutes on the Wellington? 14, 400. Don't think I'm going to let some little girl get in my face because you got issues on being a woman in the kitchen. I was just saying that this way I was stop, showing. Stop talking back. Pull it together. I have it together, chef. Don't you Talk back to me. Don't you ever I'm talk not back, to me. back to me. Yes, you are. Pull it together. I'm talking. Come here. What the f are you doing? You're not communicating. Your head's in the f sand. And at this moment now, I need you to rise. I think what makes his downfall so noteworthy is that it wasn't Anton's dinner services that tanked him. It was mostly his arrogance that caught up to him, leading to some very questionable behavior at times. It's a shame too, because again, Anton was obviously talented, and I truly believe he could have won season 12 had he just shown a bit of humility. But then again, what am I saying? Anton did win season 12, remember? I didn't walk away with the crown, but I was the best out of everybody in there. So that makes me the winner of Hell's Kitchen in my opinion. Thank you guys so much for watching this video of the most shocking downfalls in Hell's Kitchen. If you enjoyed it and want to see more content like this, then please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and let me know which downfall shocked you the most in the comments below. With all that said, take care everyone and I'll see you next time. Get out of there.